I, so I would consider you as a versatile in nature, kind of multi-talented, multi-skilled, multi-person, multi-tasker. And, and uh, as you said before that you are retired, man, maybe you are retired, but old is gold. As I have seen sometimes, people usually say to Manjim, I'm like, her grammar is really outstanding. English is just like a bridge, which is quite helpful in order to connect two different people. In our initial stage, we shouldn't bother about our grammar and we shouldn't offshoot with grammar. You know why? Grammar is soul of English, root of English. So everything is fine, like my voice, video and everything. Everything, everything is perfectly all right. Wow, that's really great. So how are you doing, Manju Ma'am? How was your day so far? My day was quite hectic as usual, you know, a housewife and then a trainer and YouTube work itself, it consumes a lot of time. Okay, so sure, I, run, I, can stand. I don't know whether you know or not. So because of that, and I upload videos every day. Each single day, I upload one video, so that consumes a lot of time, but still, <laughs> it was fine, and yesterday, yeah, yeah. So, yes, mm. I, so I would consider you as a versatile in nature, kind of multi-talented, multi-skilled, multi-person, multi-tasker, and means you are trying to kill two birds with one stir. Is it so? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because, you know, I am a retired teacher, actually. I was working in a convent school for past 32 years. And in the year 2022, I got retired. Okay, so, okay. Uh, I thought of doing something where I can make simply myself busy. And uh, oh, as a result, right. uh, I created my channel where I started uploading certain English contents. And these days, I'm very much a regular uh, in this field, like, you no know, conversation videos I'm uploading. And I love this journey because I get to know so many people, their culture, about them. So it's a kind of learning for me. And at the same time, entertainment. So, yes, uh, you are Shiv. I know your name. Uh, I would really love it if you would take the honor of introducing yourself for me and for my even audience. Sure, ma'am. Why not? I would be more than happy if I would introduce myself first. Uh, well, my name is Shiv. I'm from India, from northern part of India, and uh, I born and raised in Uttarakhand. Well, I'm a government servant, and uh, in addition to this, I'm done with my master in English, master in commerce, and this year I'm pursuing my master in economics. This is my final year. At the same time, I do teach English to beginners and intermediate speakers with the help of some online applications. And I have my own YouTube channel. Uh, my channel name is English with Teacher Shiv. So this is all from my side. Over to you. OK, thank you so much. Hey, you are a versatile person because you are a government servant, as you said. And being a government servant, uh, the, pers the person usually what happens is that they are satisfied, quite cool and calm, nothing to do <laughs> now because all True. things in the government sector. This is what I feel that most of the people, they have this kind of feeling. Even my father was in government sector. My uncle was in government sector. So this is what they had in their mind. Once in the government sector, now the future is all secure. <laughs> but <laughs> after, also you are trying <laughs> so many things. So it's really nice. Okay, so it's my turn to introduce myself. Please, ma'am. As you know, my yeah. name is Matthew Mishra. And I am from Lucknow. And I completed my master's and then uh, uh, entity and then BA. And since 1990, I have been teaching formally in schools. And now three different schools I taught because they were all convent schools. And in the year two, uh, 2022, as I told you, I got retired. I have two children, one son and one daughter. They both are grown up. They are all settled in their career. My husband is a doctor. And I run my YouTube channel. I take online classes too. That's how I make myself busy these days. So this is important. Wow. Uh, yes. Let me make long story quite short that you are all set. Nothing. And uh, as you said before that you are retired, ma'am. Maybe you are retired, but all this gold, undoubtedly. That's what I believe on. And the uh, second thing that you are saying that you, you are trying to make yourself, please, I'm telling you honestly, you are not trying to make yourself. Please. In fact, 
you are trying to assess a lot of people who are still waiting for your guidance, your direction, the very auspicious and beautiful tips and tricks that you have where people can acquainted with those tips and tricks and they can get master this language as you have gotten already. And um, honestly speaking, like I'm a bit afraid of talking with you because um, I don't know grammar, honestly. Uh, as I have seen sometimes, people usually say, Manjum, I'm like, her grammar is really outstanding. And I haven't learned grammar in my entire life, honestly. I don't even know a single little grammar. Because I took English as a language, not a subject. I haven't learned English in an academic way that I need to follow some syllabus where I have to start part of space, prepositions, modus, and all this. No, I don't have any idea about it. But yes, what I feel, English is just like a bridge, which is quite helpful in order to connect two different people having different languages. So English being a common language would help them in order to communicate with each other and exchange their message, whatever they want to convey with each other. So that's what I can say. And uh, as you said, like you are from Lucknow, so you are the bandit queen of Nababoka Sahil Lucknow. I'm really happy to talk <laughs> with our one of teacher. Like this is a very first time, I guess second time I'm talking to a professional teacher. So thank you for uh, providing this hospital hospitality to me to have a conversation with you. Thank you so much. Same here. Yeah, feeling is mutual. I can say I'm equally happy because you have a flawless English. I can see. I don't know whether what was your medium of education, but you are speaking English quite well and you have acquired a very nice accent, I must say. So today my learners are going to learn uh, so many things where especially many people they ask me now uh, how much accent is important for you so i always tell them that see for me if you ask i cannot acquire a new kind of accent because uh, you said old is gold so old has acquired one kind of you no know, uh, thing and that cannot change now okay sure. Yeah. I it is said that Buddha Tota Ram Ram Nahi Kata. So the same thing <laughs> now I have become old. Wow. Yeah, good one. <laughs> yeah, so that is how I do. But yes, of course, uh, it attracts people when you speak any language in a decent accent. So that certainly attracts people, and you have acquired this accent. And certainly, how have you acquired that? I would love to know. Uh, you can share this, whether you worked for it or you had from the beginning itself. Uh, well, that's a very nice question. I must appreciate that you have asked this question to me and I would love to answer it. Uh, the very first thing that I want to share is the difference between accent and pronunciation. What is pronunciation? Pronunciation is nothing. When you pronounce one single word with the help of syllable, that is called pronunciation. And what is accent? Accent is something which tells you about your origin, your culture, your tradition, from where which nation you belong to. So accent is just like a style, the way you speak whole sentence, the way you pronounce whole sentence. Pronunciation, only one word, and accent when you pronounce whole sentence. So that's the difference. Now, pronunciation is universal, worldwide accepted. If you know how to pronounce word correctly, uh, it should be pronounced. You can make yourself comprehensible to anyone, no matter from which part he or she belongs to. On oh. other hand, accent has some limitations. For example, if I would speak in an American accent, so those who are from the United States or those who are learned this accent, they are the only one who can understand me. The rest of the people, they can't even understand me. And then, only I lost the beauty of this language, right? Third thing, what I believe and what I do suggest to my students that neutralize your accent and improvise your pronunciation. What does that mean? Okay. For example, I hope you have talked with some people who are from Southern part of India and they have MTI, mother tongue influence in the spoken English. Once when they speak English, uh, they uh, like I can see some mother tongue influence in their spoken English. So if you will talk to them and uh, sorry, I'm getting a call from someone. Uh, am I visible to you and audible? You are visible and audible. If you want to receive that call, you can. No, no, I don't want to receive, but I can't see anything. Any will let it be. 
Uh, okay, let me continue. So what I'm saying that uh, neutralization of accent implements like your mother tongue friend should not be there. Um, mostly, like I don't want to uh, discourage them, but they speak English in a different tone and it sounds a bit awkward. So when you speak English, I would suggest you just try to have a neutral accent. Like no one can easily identify you from where and which part of country you belongs to. Like that kind of neutralization I'm talking about. Secondly, when I said improvise your pronunciation, simply means like you have to understand that value of uh, pronunciation. When you are pronouncing correctly, you can make yourself understandable to anyone. All right. And accent and pronunciation works together. Like they both are uh, interrelated to each other. That's what I believe. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Um, I think you have asked like, how did I acquire this accent? So honestly speaking, I don't even know the answer of this question because since I started learning this language, I've been talking to many native speakers from around the world, like from United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia. And I got an influence of the accent on my way of speaking. But uh, I hope the way I'm speaking right now, you guys can understand me easily. So that's more than enough for me. Yes, yes, that's fantastic. But yeah, uh, the way you are speaking, everybody would love to speak in the same way. So you are doing a great job. And as you said that in spite of being a government employee, you are teaching to some students are you teaching just spoken English or you are teaching English as a language? Um, I'm teaching English just a language because uh, I want people to speak English in such a way as they can speak in their own native language. That's it. I never try to teach grammar to anyone. Uh, I don't want to disrespect you, but what I believe in our initial stage, we shouldn't bother about our grammar and we shouldn't offshoot with grammar. You know why? For example, if I'm a beginner and I'll think about grammar while speaking English, what will happen? Let me show you. Am I speaking right? Am I speaking wrong? Oh, shall I use have, has? Actually, I'm creating a type of uh, grammar in my mind. And uh, you are going to divide your mind into two different parts. One part of mind is thinking about your accuracy, whether you are using right grammar or not. And second part, is focusing the content which you are going to speak about. So you can't even cross a river by sailing two different boats. You have to choose one port. At some, to some extent, you can uh, sail, but after that, you have to choose only one boat. So uh, I would say in initial stage, just focus on your flow and confidence. Only two things. Once you reach on that level where you can speak English without any shyness and hesitation with anyone, then after you must work on your grammar because Grammar is soul of English, root of English. I would say uh, what we can say spinal bone of English. Without grammar, you can't even speak a single word. For example, if I would say, uh, ma'am, is name my Steve? Does it make any sense? It's not. Everything is fine. Like my is there, is is there, name is there, and Shiv is there. What's wrong? But if I'll speak in this way, no? is my name Shiv? People are definitely going to laugh at me. Some of them, they are going to throw a stone on me. Are you mad? Do you know how to speak English? So my name is Shiv. That's correct. Why? There is subject, verb, and object rule. We need to follow it. So in this way, I would say you can't even ignore grammar, but only for beginners. To some extent in their initial stage, just forget about grammar, keep the sight. But once you reach on that level, then you have to work on it. That's what I believe. That's true. This question has been asked to me hundred times more than hundred times ma'am is grammar really required because i have been a grammar teacher and my channel's name is grammar with manju ma'am so this question has been asked and every time i used to just tell them yes grammar is important because we are not native speakers so we have learned like this that subject should come first and then verb should come and then comes object and then we know subject verb agreement and then we arrange everything systematically and that is how we do but yes if you are having atmosphere environment like today people have so they can learn. But in our days, we never had, we had only one radio, no TV, no mobile, no network, nothing. So we learned English through grammar. 
बिकॉज वी न्यू अगर मुझे बोलना है मैं खाता हूँ देन वॉट शुड कम विद आई विच विल बी फॉलोड इफ इट इज प्रेजेंटेंस देन वॉट शुड बी यूज इफ इट इज पास दैट इज हाउ वी लर्न ओके सो आई ऑलवेज टेल दैट ये ग्रामर इज इम्पॉर्टेंट but yes if we are connecting to certain people those who are really speaking correct english right english then we need not to learn grammar separately as a subject so you are right today people have so many things seen from the group where i found you there i think more than 500 people are there isn't it true it is so people are every time i see when i take sessions that time i see that so many pop ups are coming everybody is ready are you free can somebody have a conversation on video call audio call people are getting so many chances opportunity and they are talking so certainly first priority is always open your mouth start speaking so that you overcome your fear and hesitation that is very important so yes what challenges are you facing when you teach children students then what do you face what is the major problem you are facing whether they are only hesitant or they do not know sentence structure or they are unaware of any grammar portion because some grammar is required even if you want to say i go why not i goes okay even two words you have to uh, uh, no combine then also you should know that why he goes why i go you should know it yeah but yeah listening helps a lot and these days people are listening a lot and that is helping them so what kind of challenge do you find in your students yeah uh, i love to answer this question but ma'am uh, can i have uh, only one two seconds only for two seconds Sure. I'm just muting myself only for two seconds. Yeah. Please, please. Sorry, sorry, sorry for my interruption. This happens. This happens. Actually, me also. No, uh, you asked me that time after lunch. I take a little rest. You can say a short nap. I take. But yeah, I had given the time, and I really wanted to connect with you because uh, I saw your messages many times in the group. So I felt like let's just connect because most of the people they have connected with me. So I found you new in that group. Okay, so I felt like messaging you. So yeah, please over to you. Ah, uh, thanks, ma'am, for asking that question. Like, what challenges are I'm facing when someone like connecting with me or my students are question asking questions to me? Ah, uh, most of the time they are facing four problems, and what are these four problems? The very first thing, they feel so underconfident while speaking English. They hesitate and they will shy a lot when it comes to talking with people in English. Second, of course, grammar is one of them. Like they feel, sir, when I'm speaking English, I don't know what kind of sentence structure I have to follow. I don't know grammar, and uh, I make a lot of mistakes related to grammar only. So I don't feel myself to speak English in front of anyone. Third thing, people usually face problem in terms of pronunciation. And so they mispronounce the words, and uh, they don't know how to pronounce the word correctly. And especially when it comes to a new word in front of them, the word which they are not acquainted with before. And the last problem they have been facing is, they always ask me this question, like, sir, would you mind if you tell me, like, how did you learn this language? What are the tips and tricks and secrets do you have in your pocket which you can serve to us, and we can also follow those tips and tricks, and we can sound more perfect and fluent. So these are uh, some basic question I've been following or uh, facing with these students who have been asking question to me. So yeah, that's all. <laughs> these are the problems you have been facing. Okay, so are yeah. you uh, teaching them at your home or you have just hired somewhere some coaching center and there you are going and teaching them? How is, is it going on, or is it totally online? It is totally online. To be very honest with you, ma'am, I don't speak English in my real life because I don't have anyone with whom I can speak in English in my real life. No one is interested, but my office colleagues are not interested. They speak pure Hindi because a government department they works in that language Hindi only. There's no English at all, and uh, I have been using different application. I guess around seven or eight application I've been using. In order to assist different uh, students from different part of India, and sometimes, like I do, talk with people who are from different countries as well, like Bangladesh, Indonesia, Philippines, Burma, and there are so many others. 
So I'm just connecting with them with the help of online application. And uh, just because of one application, uh, there were some students, they requested me, sir, just because you are a government employee and sometimes whenever you create your own panel in order to teach us, we are not able to join your classes. So all we, you know, all you need to do that uh, just try to open your own YouTube channel where you can provide all this stuff and uh, we can learn from there as well. So then I thought, okay, fine, let me do it. Uh, honestly speaking, I was so afraid about it because I haven't faced camera in my entire life. Once mm -hmm. I've been talking to people or it's been more than three and a half years, I've been talking to many students around the world, but uh, that's on a virtual platform and on an audio call. But, so this is the first platform, Skype, where I'm talking with people in, uh, on a like a video call. And uh, in initial stage, like when I was new to this application, it's been only three or four days I've been using this app. Uh, in my first call, I was like savoring. Uh, you can't even imagine, I disconnected my call three times. And then I came to know the level of pressure of students they have been facing when it comes to underconfident. Like why they keep saying that, sir, I'm not confident, I'm feeling hesitation, I'm, I'm a bit afraid. But that day only I came to know, okay, fine, that's the issue. But I've been telling people, if you have any phobia in your life and you want to overcome with that phobia, there's no other options except you have to face that phobia. And I have decided, okay, anyhow, I don't know what will I do, but I would conquer this phobia of being on a video call with someone. So here I'm in front of you. Yes, of course. The same had happened with me. Once I started my channel, I had to make small rules i started making with the small rules of 30 seconds shots or something like that when my son used to take mobile to take my uh, to make a video that time i was shivering like anything as if i'm teaching for the very first time whereas i had already taught for 32 years in my past so this happens when we are camera conscious yeah so you are right I agree. but <laughs> okay, uh, i think you are far better than me in terms of every aspects you know why because uh, the way you are using of uh, connected english the way you are using your camera articulation and your voice modulation intonation everything is really up to the mark though you don't have any accent you have your own pure divine and auspicious indian accent i love it but still, the way you are framing sentence, you are not even thinking a single second what I have to speak, uh, what kind of terminology I have to use. And uh, of course, as you are a grammar teacher, so you don't need to think about grammar. So you're blessed with this kind of skills. I'm really happy for that. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your compliments. Uh, okay, now, this is actually a strength for me when somebody says that, yeah, you are speaking well, whereas I know my weaknesses. Um, very well aware of, but still, it's fine. We, we should accept us as we are. And if we need certain changes, uh, certainly we should try for that. We cannot grab in a day, but yes, if we'll try and try, then some, someday maybe I can also achieve certain level of another level of fluency, another level of accent. Maybe this can happen even at this age. So I do agree that learning takes place at any age. And I'm trying for that. Okay. So yeah, of one... course, someone rightly said, uh, age is just a number. There is no particular age, particular time, particular uh, application, particular day, where you have to think, I would start from this now. It's not. And um, being a teacher, there are so many responsibilities you've already had, as you have taught so many students. So I think now you got to know about the problem of students as well, like where they are lacking. And as you said, like you have weakness, everyone has some weaknesses in ourselves because uh, no one is perfect. Of course, we all are human beings and we are born to make mistakes, honestly. But uh, I would consider him as a very intellectual and cognitive human person who always try to embrace his weakness and lackings and to take initiative in order to work on it so that he would be able to get rid of all those shortcomings and drawbacks which he has been facing so long. If you want to be a flawless, first identify your flaws and then start working on it. The more you are going to run out from your flaws, 
I think you are just a quiet person. And I would say if you want to become an advanced and fluent speaker of English, you have to become a warrior, a soldier who is always ready to fight on battleground, never try to quit his war until or unless he is not going to ensure his victory at the end. <laughs> Yes, true. Very well said. And now my another question. I know that we are running short of time, but still one more question. If I ask you that everything you described about yourself, you are an uh, employee in government sector. You are teaching some learners and you have your YouTube channel. I just want to know that what motivated you to create your YouTube channel? What was the reason? Uh, basically, there are three reasons behind it. First reason I have already shared. I was in uh, one application. Their students have recommended me to open my own YouTube channel for them. For the feasibility of their convenience, I started my own YouTube channel so that the stuff which I'm providing there, and just because of any reason, if they are not able to join my session, at least they can acquire the same stuff from my YouTube videos. That's the first oh. thing. Second thing, um, uh, I haven't shared with you, but um, I talked to one native speaker teacher from United States, and I asked her, ma'am, though I'm speaking well, but I want to improve more, and how can I do it? Then she suggested me that start teaching others. If you are going to teach others, somehow to some extent, you are going to teach yourself first. For example, in your case as well, I hope you have remember your days when you used, to, you used to teach your students. First, you just take a look towards the lesson which you have to teach the next day in your class. And then you are going to teach. In Though class, you are proficient, but still. Last day, I had been doing the same. Yeah, before entering the <laughs> class. Every year, the syllabus changes, the board introduces something new. Okay, so we True. use yeah. every day because once you enter in the class, you cannot be blank in front of your students. You have to have ma mastery over your topic, which you are going to take up in the classroom today. So we used yeah. to do it. Yeah, yes, yes. So that is true that when once you teach, for teaching sake, you prepare that thing very well because you know that you are going to face your own students. You have your own image in front of your children. So yes, that is another reason for you to create your channel. Yes, exactly. And uh, the third reason uh, was to motivate me to start my own YouTube channel is actually I want to speak English as I can speak in my own native language naturally, smoothly, comfortably, without mm -hmm. making a mistake, without thinking about what shall I use, without any grammar rules, without stammering, without fumbling, in a simple and sober way that the way I speak with people, I can connect with people in my native language. I want to connect with people in the same way. And if you want to reach on that level, of course, no doubt, you have to be very, very hardworking person. You have to do a lot of hard work in order to reach on that level. Because the more you become persevering, the better you can learn this language, undoubtedly. And last but not least, I was criticized by someone in my initial days just because of this language. And I don't want anyone to be criticized by someone else for the same thing. That's why I always try to help people. I always try to guide some of my students and those are inquisitive and eager aspirants who are literally looking for their advancement in this language and want to sound like a pro speaker. Good, very well explained, Shiv. I'm really happy to invite you on my channel. And you shared a lot many tips and tricks, which is certainly going to help my learners and viewers. Uh, so thank you so much. I know I think yeah. it's time for us to uh, wind up the session. I do have a lot of things on my plate, which I want to serve you. But today I'm just running out with my time. So that's why I'm not able to do it. But for sure, definitely, I'm looking forward to talk with you again. And in my next conversation, I'm definitely sure I'm going to make a bombardment of my question to you. And I want you to diffuse all those bombs in such a way as you have been doing since long the day you started teaching your students. Thank you so much. I'm ever ready. I always love to answer everyone's question. So I would be waiting 
for that session when you are going to ask me questions today. I asked you a few questions which I felt like asking you. OK, so we'll certainly join once again and we'll connect soon. OK. Yes, All right. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, so it was really nice talking to you. Keep talking and keep enlightening us with your vast knowledge and experience. Thank Have you. a nice day. Bye bye, ma'am. Bye. -bye.